I want to take a few minutes and talk about all of these scientific studies they come up with with hunting and deer and whitetails and how it's actually confusing people and I feel like a lot of it is making hunters worse. It's making them a bad hunter because they're relying on all these so-called scientific studies and there may be these studies. They, they do them. A lot of it is on you know big wooded areas, continuous woods, and it doesn't relate to the average hunter because most hunters only have 20 acres, 30 acres, 40 acres, 50 acres, 200, 300, whatever it is, 500 acres, and that's only a small portion of a deer's movement, especially you know, does have that small movement, but bucks have a larger range, right? So if we only have 20 acres to hunt on, right, this whole scientific thing of all this barbell movement and things like that doesn't relate to us because we only have that 20 acres to, to hunt on, right? So we can't control what that deer does outside of that. We can only control what it does on the inside of that. There isn't a single scientific study that you, a, a hunter, us, need to know about because to be a hunter, we have to go back to the basics. And the basics is understanding that a deer needs to feed and sleep throughout the day. That deer feeds three, four, five times a day, right, on any given day. There's some variables to that with weather conditions, the food that's available, and pr hunting pressure. That deer may bed up a little bit longer, wait till nighttime, feed at night. But the, but, you know, the basic is that deer needs to eat just like we do. We need to eat and we need to sleep, right? There's a lot of people out there trying to make this deer hunting into a scientific thing, and it's really not because they want to come up with their own way of doing it so they can try to claim that it's theirs or you know all these coin the phrases stuff and and stuff it just drives me crazy because being a hunter right is understanding how to scout for deer you're looking for sign on the ground you're looking for tracks you're looking for deer trails right they stand out pretty clear you're looking at the lay of the land deer are lazy they travel the lay of the land the path of least resistance right so if we're working on 20 acres, okay, we can only do and control what's inside that 20 acres, right? There's things that we can do with, you know, creating some bedding, but that's also now getting overemphasized because, you know, just because we make a bedding area doesn't mean a specific buck is going to bed in there. It's a wild animal, guys. That deer is going to do what it wants to do. It's going to travel outside of your 20 acres. You're not going to be able to hold that deer on your on your 20 acres it's going to roam out now can we encourage it to stay on there for longer periods of time yes we can that's where food plots come in that's where you know some bedding areas come in some travel corridors we can take deer trails and make them better if those deer trails on your property are in an area where we can't access then we can actually block those things off and create our new trails to push them deer out to an area where we can actually access and hunt we kind of do what we want them to do, right? That's the things that we can do. But all these studies on, it just, it blows my mind because people are relying on these, right? And they're saying, oh, why well, you have to try to emphasize this study on my property and you're trying to control a wild animal, it just doesn't work, okay? You have to go back to the basics. All these trade shows I go to that I sit behind the booth and I tell people, hey, you know, we need to focus on more natural browse, you know, that the deer eat. And they're like, what are you talking about? What is natural browse? I'm like, it's, it's the food that deer eat every single day, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten pounds of it a day. Natural browse. It's the natural forage that's in the woods already that deer consume on a regular basis. This is the backbone to all healthy deer herds is natural browse. You know, these food plots we put out these supplemental feed you know these blocks and stuff like that mineral this is supplemental okay this is this is supplemental that we you know help them the backbone to these deer herds healthy deer herds is natural browse why do we not have enough of that anymore because we're not doing tsi we're not managing the forest to open up the canopy to allow sunlight into the floor all these properties and around the country is closed canopy forest so we're not getting the regeneration of natural browse. We have to work, that's what the stuff 
that we can do, we can worry about. But none of it is scientific. If we, if we only focused on scientific studies, where are we going to be? I feel like 20 years ago, 23, 4 years ago when I started deer hunting, people were actual hunters. They relied on the visualizations that they see in the woods, the tracks, the droppings that deer are leaving behind. You know, we realize that deer can bed over here and travel over here to feed so we can intersect them in the middle and bow hunt, okay? The deer go from point A to point B in an unpressured situation. We set up in between, we can catch them. We set up in the bedding areas in the morning, we can catch them coming back to the bed because they pretty much bed during the daytime. Evening, we have the food source. That's where the deer is going to go to feed. In the evening, we can catch them sometimes going there. That's just basics to actual deer hunting and realizing what a deer does on a daily basis. But to try to, to, try to get a wild animal to do what we want them to do 24 seven, it just doesn't work. You know, if we have a thousand acre property, then that's a different story, but that's a very small percentage of hunters. They don't have a thousand acres to work with to where we can tr control every ounce of movement that they do in a 24 hour period. We're working on 20 acres. We're working on 30 acres. We're working on 60 acres. We can put in some bedding areas, right? But, we can put in some food plots to help control the movement, right? But as far as scientific studies go, people are relying on them way too much. There's no science to planting a food plot. None, guys, none. There, it's easy. You have to have soil to seed contact and rainfall and the seed grows. All of these crimpers and this rolling and all these different things I'm seeing, people are failing at food plots. They're becoming I actually feel really bad for new hunters coming up into this generation of hunting is because there's so much information out there and it's really confusing guys. I, I feel bad. I get dozens of emails and questions on TikTok or not TikTok, uh, Instagram of people who are like, Hey, I tried so-and-so's method and it doesn't work. How do I fix it? How do, what do I do? What went wrong? I'm like, I don't know because that's, that's some thing that somebody tried to create on their own and it just doesn't work. So I can't help you. I don't do that method. So I don't know what to tell you. You know, I go back to the basics of tilling the ground, putting seed on it and having rain fall on it. And it just grows. I go back to people go back to when their grandparents or, or something used to garden when people actually garden behind their house, you dig a hole, you put a seed in it, it rains or you water it with a watering can and it grows. That's how we have to look at food plots. All these people coming up with these scientific terms and things, it's really confusing people and it's making people argue and fight on social media, especially Facebook. Somebody says, oh, well, so-and-so said this, but I did it this way and, and people bash them because they did it a different way. There's a hundred different ways you can do something but if you stick to the basics, right, the basics of soil seed contact and rainfall and moisture content, you're going to have better success. You're going to have deer. You're going to have an attraction to that thing, that food plot, and you're going to have success with it. You're going to have high tonnage and everything like that. If we stick to the basics of knowing that deer feed three, four, five times a day, they live by their stomach, they sleep, they feed, and they poop. We go in the woods. We do, tr we do scouting, we see where their droppings are, we see where a deer, deer trail is, we follow that deer trail, know that it goes over here to this thick area, it travels out through probably the path of least resistance through the lay of the land and the terrain that you're on, and it goes over here to feed. Where is it feeding? Well, it could be an acorn, you know, oaks dropping at that time, it could be an ag field, it could be a food plot on private land. This is the stuff we need to stick to, stick to the basics of deer hunting. Go back years ago. What what did the people do back then? What did the deer hunters do? We had boots on the ground. We had travel corridors that we looked at. You know, we looked at the sign on the ground, the pass wore down, the deer tracks, the droppings, the browse areas. We go into an area of regeneration. We see all the browse of the deer feeding on the woody browse and you know, you can see that it, it's like rough chewed, right? It's not just like a clean snap of, a, of a, a cut of the branch. 
it's like it's nibbled on it's it's uh it's not a, it's a hard edge that is deer browse that's natural browse that deer consume on a daily basis focus on this guys and i promise you you'll become a better deer hunter we don't need scientific studies okay it just it's not going to relate to us most of us in the country we don't need scientific studies to become a deer hunter or kill more deer it's just the facts guys you don't need it go back to the basics put boots on the ground and understand what a deer does from bedding to feeding any questions leave them down below give me your thoughts and i'll guys see you on the next video